when you find a certain mean value in a sample, you know that results may vary. The next time you take a sample from the same population, there will be different values. So we usually calculate the margin of error or the confidence intervals. So we expect the next values to be inside this range. If it's outside that range, there is a significant difference. This is all nice and fine if you know that the population you take the sample from is normally distributed. That is not always the case or you do not always know whether that is the case. In such situation you have to do bootstrapping. That means you have to pull yourself out of the trouble, bootstrap, and find that situation. So let's say we found these values. I cannot calculate the normal way, the mean, and the upper bound, and the lower bound, or the margins of error, or the confidence intervals. I have to do a little more. So what do we do? We are going to resample this thing in a simulation. We do that exactly the same number of cases, and then we calculate the mean. But how did we get these values? We use the index function, and we say from that range, a1 through a30, give me a random value. So take the row number from the collection of rows, a1 through a30, times a random number. And a random number gives you a value between 0 and 1. So it's, it recalculates all the time and finds a different row. So we have to add 1 because rand is between 0 and 1. So when I do that and I copy that formula down, I get a random selection of these values with repetition, by the way. So we have 5 several times here. We have 1, 4 several times, etc. Calculate the mean of this sample. But there is only one drawing, one run. So we're going to replicate that a few times. So you copy all these formulas to the right. I did that 15 times, which is not really much, but that is just we, all we can see. And you calculate all the means for those. So each drawing gives me a different mean. So now I have to find out this was bootstrapping already, but we are not done yet. We have to find out what is the mean of all these means, and then find the upper bound and the lower bound. I did that here. The mean of the means is the average of all these means. How many samples do we have? Count all these means. And then we have to find out what is the cutoff value at the 2.5% level, two-tailed, that is 2.5% to the left, 2.5% to the right, which is the, the most common confidence level. That is the number of samples times 0 0.025. I really have to round that up, in this case, to 1, because we are going to find the, the k of the value in a sorted order. So if we would sort these means in a sorted order, then I could find the k of value. We can do that with a very simple formula, that is the small function. Small says, give me the smallest value, so it sorts internally from these means. At what position? We use the roundup function to round up that number that we found as the cutoff value. I rounded that up to zero number of digits, because we need a real integer value. But if I use integer, it might in this case round down, and that would be the value 0, and there is nothing at the zeroest, at the zeroest position. Okay. Then we do the same for the upper bound, but we use the large function. The large function looks at the end, and it finds the 
the third if position or the first position at the end. So we found out based on 15 runs that the mean of the means is 40.97 with a low, lower bound of 35 and an upper bound of 47. Everything outside that range would be significantly different. If I press F9, everything will recalculate and I get different results, of course, because I have only 15 runs. We are going to do this with Visual Basic so I can run many more cases without using all this space for nothing. So I'm going to Visual Basic, Alt F11, insert a module, I did that already, and I called it Sub Bootstrap. I declared a series of values, uh, a, a series of variables. The, the, the different kind is these two, they are arrays, means open close parentheses, values open close parentheses. We will store multiple values in there. We calculate how many values we have in our sample. So we take on sheet one range A1, the current region, dot rows, dot count. In our case that will be 30. And then we set O range, which is of the range type, to sheet one range starting at cell A1 through cell A30, cells R, row 30, column 1. We have already declared the variable means, but now we are going to redim it. And we say it should run from 1 to 100, so it should hold 100 values. Then we loop 100 times, 4, j equals 1 to 100, next j. Inside that loop, we are going to redim the values array from 1 to R. Remember, each time we need to do the same number of samples. 1 to R. We loop through those 30 values in the array and we store in there for the first element, the second element, up to the 30th element. The worksheet function index that, that I explained in the sheet already, based on O range, that is that range here, and we take a row, the total number of rows times a random function, and we add one. We store them 30 times in that array, so we get 30 new chosen sampled values. Then we take the average of all those values and we put that in the first element of the means array, which runs from 1 to 100. So we are going to run that 100 times. On the spreadsheet we did it 15 times. 100 times would take a lot of space, but here it goes much faster. So means j, that is the first time 1, will have the average of the first drawing and then the second up to 100. And the rest is basically very simple. The mean of the means is the average of the means array and we round them to two decimals. That is just my decision. You can do as many decimals as you need to keep your precision correct. Then I calculate the cutoff value. That is 100 because we have 100 drawings times 2.5%. We round it up to, to zero decimals. And then we create a string that says the mean of the means is P mean, which is the rounded average. Hook onto it space, ampersand space, a carriage return. That means in the message box it will be on the next line. Then we say expand that S message string. Take what you have already. Hook onto it the lower bound is the small function of Excel, based on means, the I cut off position, round it to two decimals. 
and we expand it one more time what you had already with a carriage return in the upper bound is the worksheet function large here we use small there we use large the rest is the same and then finally we say in a message box give me that entire message in the message box as message let's test it remember this one is a, a 15 run drawing here which i can rerun and rerun now i'm going to run it with visual basic and just compare it it is it will be more precise and it will differ from this drawing for this is only based on 15. i created a shortcut for that macro bootstrap options Control shift b Control shift b and it runs very fast it runs 100 times instead of 15 times it says this time the mean is 40 56 there it happened to be 42 the lower bound is 32 the upper bound is 49. i could run it again it will be different from the previous one but the differences will be much smaller this time because i have a much more accurate approach maybe you want to know much more about what we are doing how you do vba more intricately etc so i developed two tools a cd-rom and a book excel scientist and it has four parts data analysis plotting data in graphs curve fitting statistical analysis i wish you good luck with excel for scientists